It's the Controller Bob, Captain Joel Show. Controller Bob and Captain Joel Show. Controller Bob and Captain Joel. Controller Bob and Captain Joel Show. Jeez, you're done. Don't touch it yet. Wait. It's on. It's it's on on like Donkey Kong. Are we on what? Episode six? It's over. What are you doing? I don't know. You know there's a license for this. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Stop! (laughs) Stop touching the accelerator. Can I try this time? My my drone experience is slim. No, I have a little bit of this. All right. Now I did the radio control. Do you have a drone certificate? I do not. Stick back. Uh, stick, stick back. Arm. This is arm? Have you been checked out? No. Oh, there it is. Oh! Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. What the heck? <laughs> hey! Easy! <laughs> you almost worked the wiener on that one. <laughs> Whoa! What? Turn it what? off! What? Where? Oh, okay. Jeez. Don't Clean up that. your tie to the table, would you? Thank you. Thank you. I can't take you anywhere. <sighs> All right, hold on. Let's get this. Cause Cockpit awesome. resource management, our first topic of the day. Do you day. have any? Is it really? Um, Cockpit resource management? I thought it was a good I thing asked, since I, you have stuff I all have over your table. I have a question for you. Do you have, this is a really cool table. Do you have any airplane furniture, parts as furniture? Um, I have lots of parts, but no furniture. You do have lots of parts. What is your favorite part that we need to do something with? I don't know. We'll have to think I know of, what it is. Hmm. I asked a question thinking you would know, but it's... It's uh, these. It's the mains for that Cessna. We got a tear. Oh well, we, yeah. The spring loaded. The spring gear. Because you had an incident. Yeah, I had an incident. Somebody once. had an incident. Wasn't you that had? Yeah, an incident. that's when my truck, uh, uh, my airplane came back on the back of a truck. That's never a good idea. No, no, no. Yeah. Everybody was all right, but the yeah, airplane. Yeah, well, that's good. Yeah. Right. Air, airplane had to be uh, but the, replaced. The mains are bent. Yes. Right. But you we're going to take the calipers off of right. them. We're going to take the axles off of them. Spindle. And the axle uh, spindle. Uh, yeah, and yeah. the wheels. And then what are you going to do then? And then, then we're going to send it to scrap. Scrap. Yeah. Hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> today it's we're going to. Aloha, <laughs> Bob. Captain Joel Weiner. Hey, man. How are you guys doing today? Well, today we're just going to talk about um, banner towing and okay. spelling. Pretty big deals, I would imagine. So, so everybody wants to know how you work and how and you. And wait, get, wait. When you how, say everybody. Everybody in the pilot. World okay. wants to know how you got your time and how you right. paid for your flight training and so forth. You're, are we talking about you now? No, you. Oh, me. Yeah. Well, we're well, yeah. talking. Okay, so, so that's not so what I you we come were in and, and right. Bob here is my ground crew right. for my banner operation. So yeah, he makes banners, sets them up. You know why? Um, because you can. No, I'm not essential. Oh, well, not essential. Yeah. No. We banner, have to talk about that. No, banner operations are very very cool. No, we're not talking about that. No, banner <laughs> banner operations are very cool. But here's the deal with banners, is what's the most important aspect of making a banner? Spelling it correctly. That is exactly right. And you know what? How many times should you proofread a banner before you fly it? Well, obviously twice didn't work, so maybe three times? Uh, we, I think it was at least three. Or f- <laughs> well, okay, so here's the procedure. You build the banner. So we put a whiteboard next to the rack. You go grab your letters. You st- you put them up. And, and if you want to see how this is all done, you can follow Bob on his Instagram. Yeah, we'll, we'll show some of that stuff. Um, but um, what is my – do I have an Instagram? I don't know. It is. Do you Facebook, mean, Instagram, no, that's, that's all Aloha that. Bob Jacks, I think is what it is. I think it is. I'm not very good at the social media thing. But it doesn't matter, regardless. So you build the banner, then you lay it out on a taxiway, and then you look at it to make sure you spell it correctly. Right? But taxiway wouldn't be the term for it, but well, in, front in front of the front hanger. Of the, I call it. it was, yeah, it yeah, is in front a of the hanger, right? But in front of the hanger, and then you roll it up, and then the next day or whenever you're going to fly it, you take it out to the grass and you roll it out. Typically, you next look, to the runway. Next to the runway, typically look to see if it's spelled correctly. So that's three times, right? Yes. And you get in the plane, and I set it up, and I'm standing there watching. L- this is yeah. This is the morning of the Blue Angel flyby in Jacksonville. Yeah, so very cool, and so. Next thing you know, he picks the banner up. Life is good. It starts flying away. First time, naturally, yeah, right? Yeah. How many times have you had a, somebody not catch the rope? Oh, that happens all the time. Really? Yeah, it's part of it. I've missed three times in a row before. Really? Now, the record that I've seen is about 16. 
Did but that wasn't one of my pilots. That wasn't one of my pilots. It wasn't your guys. Yeah. Um, it was back during the Super Bowl when the Super Bowl was in Jacksonville in 05, and a lot of the banner companies, they came to town, and we shared space. And one of the pilots, I, he missed 16 times. Really? What do you yeah. say to a guy who misses 16 times? He needs another career. Right. So you're basically dragging a big grappling hook behind the plane. It's how far is the, how long is the rope? My ropes are 14 feet long. Why 14? Because if we're to entangle and G forces, right. it would not swing up and hit the propeller. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that was a. I yeah. didn't think the propeller was really an issue because you drag it's it. It's really it. not, but it's part of it. Now. Are you supposed to when you? And you, and. and, and we can talk about Jason's banner experience. No, we won't but, do that. But um, he had yeah, a, yeah, well, he had a malfunction when he threw the hook out. Yeah. You know, and it was pilot induced. And so when you just drop it, you don't throw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Right? So when you take off, you, and, you take off right. and you sidestep over off the side of the runway because if you throw something out of an airplane, right. if it were to come off, right. which I've never had happen, but it, it has, it's something that could happen if it's not attached correctly. And you don't want it to come down and fall on the runway right. and cause an issue, secondary well, issue. Well, sure, right. So anyway, we built the banner, laid it out. He picks the banner. He goes off and flies. And next thing you know, I get a I get picture. A, he gets a picture, which you promptly sent to me. And I'm looking, and it, it was misspelled. Yeah, it's supposed to be. And we're already. I'm already in front of the, the beach and flying. You're already and doing it, so it's over. It's it, you know, it's nothing you can over. Do about it. And it's church, so I obviously can't spell church. It's C H U R H. Yeah, it's chur. Worst. So chur. So Jack's now it's Aloha Chur. Chur is this new call chur sign. Chur is that right? The last. <laughs> so I'm looking at it and it's, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Just well, he goes, well, that banner was for free. Yeah. I'm thinking, oh. So I text I text the customer and told him that you know sorry sorry I got no help on the ground. It uh, that's that was unfortunate. But the last time you had a misspell. Uh, the last time was, was uh, God bless America. Yeah, we had an N yeah. instead of an M in America. Yeah, and, fortunately and the, the tower the, caught that. The, and we were able to swap uh, that one yeah, out. Yeah, we swapped that one out. Flying, that never left the airport. Yeah, can you imagine flying around? Ooh, that'd that have been bad. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, if it, people are watching, go back in time on whenever you decide to watch this. But uh, when the beaches opened to Jacksonville after this whole um, virus stuff, your banner was all over the news. Yeah. So, yeah. what was the problem? You, you flew that one. Was that your idea just to do it? or just No, I, I have customers. Every now and then I fly one just for fun. Right. And uh, usually it's uh, controversial. Will you marry me? Uh, yeah, I won't fly that for fun. No. But thank you for the uh, offer, well, Bob. I just I thought you were never going to say. <laughs> Is that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. my. Well, we've been in an airplane enough together. Yeah, yeah. Right. Just a few hundred hours together. A few hundred. You know, okay, so what do I have? I, I'm over 300 now, which is cool. I think 250 of us with you. Probably. Yeah. We wow. do a lot of flying together. It's amazing I look this good. How many different types of airplanes have you flown? Uh, see, locking up the Skyhawk, obviously. Okay. Not two three Mike Zulu. Well, it's been broke. It's been broke, but uh, that's on the bucket list. That'd be pretty cool. Um, if I had a pilot that would tie it down. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um, we have to go over pre-flight and oh, post-flight you know techniques. Um, I would love that to go. You need to do because right. in a flight school, you, sometimes you don't learn how to put an airplanes idea. away and tie them down. And without him like knowing, I will go out there and we'll sign the, the airplane. Oh, new paint job. Oh, like we did. Yeah, uh, a little Sharpie right yeah, there. Yeah, Aloha, Captain, Bob. Yeah, right. Captain Joel Wiener. Mm. Just like the fighter pilot right there. And he'll never know. You think? All right, anyways, <laughs> finally. So it's the Skyhawk, the 150, the Bonanza, right? Okay. Um, 414. Okay. 425. 421. Sh- 421. Cheyenne. Mm-hmm. And then the best flight. I've had so yes, far. Yes, yeah. Go through your best so, flight because it was right. M zero A is involved in it. That's best right. Flight. So, um, as you probably are watching, um, there's a probably. I think they are. No, in the past, <laughs> not now. <laughs> They're watching now. <laughs> if you've seen some videos in the past, you know that Jason flies J three Cub. Now Jason is all of what five ten, five eleven, something like that. Maybe shorter than that. Nah, he's probably, yeah, five Camera hours. makes him look a lot taller. So when you meet him in person, you'll be shocked at how short he is. He wears heels. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Sequins and heels? Yeah. No. And pink shirts, if you look at episode, yeah. That episode two, wasn't it? Pink yeah, shirts? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Anyways, the bottom line is the Cub's pretty tight. And I got to fly the Cub. 
Uh, we went and um, you've got four million hours in Cubs and because you mm, own a couple of thousands. Right. And I have not got tailwheel, so that would be something I would love to do. And um, I, I have, have you ever started an airplane by hand? Process? No, that was another thing. So we, we go to fly the plane, and we need to go to the gas. And he goes, you ever taxied a tailwind before? Of course, he knows what I haven't flown. And I go, no. He goes, and starts the plane yeah, up. Yeah, prime it and over. It, that. And here I am taxiing a tailwheel, in, and I'm 6'2", in a cub. My knees are up by my chin, <laughs> and I'm trying to taxi this thing. It's crazy. Now, you know, taxi and tailwheel, you know, the zigzag things. So you can kind of see what in front of you. And I look over, and I haven't gone 100 yards, and here comes a Mooney the opposite direction. Yeah, I saw that. And it's now the... I have to figure out how to taxi this thing off the taxiway and turn it around. And with You no only one... had to go 150 yards. It was crazy. It was interesting. But then we go flying. And I will tell you, um, you, f- you fly different airplanes and like that, but get the opportunity to fly a cub we were flying around thousand feet you know 65 knots windows open the world just looks different and if you wanted to feel what it was like to you know why you fly airplanes that was that was really a big moment for me to sit there and and look at things from a different perspective that you didn't see before just dinking and doinking along the countryside and uh, it just cha- it just that's what aviation was all about. And I always look back to the history of what it was like in the you know many many years ago, and to be able to do that, you know, because we get into Cessnas and we're doing checklists and these kind of things, and and you know they get high higher than ten thousand feet, and the world looks cool from up there too. But from a thousand feet going slow across the countryside, just reinvigorated. It's a whole different. It was super cool, and I, I'm very very lucky to have. That's probably been my my favorite flight. Your favorite so cross country flight was. So yeah, it really was. Williston to Jacksonville. Yeah, it was in really a cub. in a cub, just going across the country. It was really neat. I, I I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional and start crying. Here All right, so minute. yeah. So <laughs> when when Bob flies, he likes to bring a cooler with water and snacks, which is just a good idea. Then he brings all his his headset bag and whatever else you got in there, and then he's always got a GoPro or two. So we go down. Do you know what the luggage compartment on a Cub is? (laughs) It's a sack. Yeah. (laughs) Not a very big sack. (laughs) I didn't know. So we go down in the 150, and everybody flies a 150. There's there's all kinds of room in the back seat. So all this stuff. So we get to Jason's hangar in Williston. Yeah. And uh, the mechanic's there to get the Cub out. Right. We put the 150 in, and and he starts unloading all this stuff. I'm like, where are you going to put all that, Bob? Well... I didn't get the brief. <laughs> Nobody told me ahead of time. So you saw me load the crap up. Where do you think I was going to go with? Leave it I, in the plane? I, I'd see you load it up every time we go somewhere. Well, then you should I have said if you, something. If we're going it's camping. your fault. Are we going camping? Well, of course, my flight bag, right? Right. You get thirsty. You're always complaining because you don't get enough water in the airplane, yeah. right? I always stay hydrated. Where's That's my cold water? Where's my cold yeah. water? You know what I mean? Stay you hydrated. And then my headset. Well, more and my And my cameras. Okay. Which, unfortunately, I didn't get set up because of... Well, I did have a couple of videos we, of that. We, we, we have some... Yeah, we, we have, should have some fun. We'll have some live footage yeah, of that right. as, as uh, this, this now, show progresses. promise me this as I touch you for oh, the 4,000th time today. Will you not yell at me? I don't yet. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see about that. Sometimes I get emotional. Right. All right, so what's, so what's this break thing? Why do you yell? Tell me about how many times you've seen students you know, rip on brakes. All right, so you have flown my airplane right what is what is sitting right down next to the briefing table in the hangar it is a brand new tire which i just put on at 100 hour had three flights on it and somebody landed with the brakes on well what happens to a tire when you land with the brakes on? flat spots right so right but student pods flat spot tires no there's no need to flat spot a tire Mm -hmm. and what happens and i maybe i need to blame the air traffic controller is at Craig, we got a 4,000-foot runway. Right. Well, halfway down, there's a turnoff. Well, the controller tries to get the airplanes off as fast, you know, because it's busy and right. they want to get them off. So a student will land and get on the brakes to try to get stopped. Well, that's not the thing to do. You need to roll out. So and- here's a little interesting thing about nothing. If, you know, you, you want to get off the runway as quick as you can, but you don't want to jeopardize the airplane in the same time, right? right. So – controller should kind of say, hey, plan to clear off at this taxiway so that you can plan the approach and landing to do that. What really gets kind of wonky is when I'm flying, or it's like, clear off at the next taxiway, and you're hauling, 
you know, down the You runway. come in a little fast. Maybe yeah, you're, maybe you're you practicing know? a non-flap landing. That's right. But regardless of, you know, if you're rolling out and you're getting told to hit this intersection and all these kind of things like that, don't feel like you have to slam the brakes and do all these things fly the, the safety of the airplane because you own the runway yeah when you're cleared to take right. off and clear to land the, air, the, runway, the is runway is yours. yours until you get off of it right if something's happening behind you and you don't hit the intersection you have the responsibility to fly the airplane correctly so don't get too terribly excited do the best you can to do that but understand that your runway fly because the last thing you want to do is flat spot a tire Lock up the brakes. Um, and I had an yeah. incident with a advanced pilot several months ago where he was out flying a Bonanza. Yeah. And it came back with two flat spotted tires. Well, Bonanza tires are about two hundred and thirty five dollars a piece. Right. The tubes are another hundred dollars, and then you got to jack it up, and you got two or three hours labor in. Right. It. So, change tires on a Bonanza is about an eight hundred dollar job. Right. And it, it. You know, it, so it could have been it could have been prevented. Well, and what about side loading? I mean, you get student pot side loading. Yeah, side loading or landing in a crosswind. And but that happens, right? If you ever pre-flight in an airplane, and you'll see uh, a nose tire, and it'll have ripples in it, and it's it's when you land in a crosswind, and the mains come down, and it tracks over, and it scalps the front tire. Well, you scalp it two or three times, and then if anybody's ever took off, and you get right about rotation speed, and the front end starts shaking. It's usually a tire out of balance that will cause it to shake, and the reason is it's it's scalped. Now, here's a million-dollar question. Why Cessna's not, say, Cherokee's went for stuff you like to train in? Oh, I'm just a Cessna guy. You were just just no particular reason? Well, um, I keep all my airplanes inside, and if you have a low-wing airplane, you can't keep anything underneath, toolboxes or golf carts or ATVs. So it's a convenience thing. Yeah. They fly about the same, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just was curious. Or I like think. what's in the hangar right now is the mall on floats. Yeah. We can store all kinds of stuff underneath Which that. Which I have not flown either. Yeah. Well, Why busy. haven't I flown the mall on floats? See? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe you need to come around more. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I need to build more banners and spell them correctly, apparently. Yeah, there you go. Well, see, so you know what they say, you know, make one mistake and then wipes out all your bonus points. In yeah, the future, yeah, right? you got to start over. So now I go back to the hangar. So anyway. Hey, everybody, I just want to say, again... Thank you for uh, hanging out with us today. Hope you had fun, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Love to do it because um, we're here for you guys. It's not about us. Hey, and remember, you need oh, a T-shirt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A good pilot is always, always learning. learning. See you guys.